It's definitely on Pappy video. Y'all was asking me about. Yeah. Yeah, we here. We pulled up. We pressed right on up. You know what's going on. Originally to video, but not description. Also, my Twitter will not be a top. It's your boy, Shinori. Let's get into it. The video. Make sure. But. We gonna make it no. out this shit. Right, right. Fuck. Uh, I'm not trying to none of that. Everybody think I'm tweaking. I'm not tweaking, bro. Yeah, I ain't back. They done lost their homies. So they feel a certain type of way. They ain't just gonna draw off losing their homies. So they won't revenge. So I feel like that was gonna stop. This is the story of young Pappy. One of the most requested stories from viewers. Pappy was one of the most talented rappers to come out of Chicago, that many predicted would have a successful future ahead of him. Sadly, like many other rappers filled with talent from Chicago, the street took him before he got out of the hood. Pappy was one of my favorite rappers to come out of Chicago, his aggressive style that can be compared to King Von along with his insane flow. It was a type of music that you could really get hyped to. Thing is with Pappy, he had his own flow. Like not too many niggas did that flow. That cadence, that 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 pattern, that you know what I'm saying, that rhythm. He had his own flow. And that was one thing that kind of drew drawed me in to Pappy or drew me in to Pappy for shit sure. You know what I'm saying? Like LA Capone, young Pappy would have been on top of the world if he had been alive today. I'm sure. His rap style was unique. No one did it like him. However, Pappy was not only a rapper, he is also alleged to have been both a shooter and a killer. What he said in his songs can be linked to the reality he lived, which makes his music and story even more interesting. Hope you enjoy this story as much as I do. Young Pappy, whose real name was Shaquan Jerome Thomas, was born on May 10th. 1995 in Chicago, Illinois. Shaquan was born on the south side of Chicago, and lived on the 53rd together with the whole family, but then moved as a child with his family to the north side of the city. There he lived with his parents and seven siblings, four brothers and three sisters, so they were a big family. However, I will only mention three of the siblings as the others are not relevant to the story so it feels unnecessary to mention the others. Pappy was the brother of Ryan, also known as B.U. Double, Davian, also known as Daysav, and Jovan, who was the oldest. Both Daysav and B.U. Double are rappers today. As a child, however, Pappy's parents divorced and the brothers split up. Pappy and his big brother B.U. Double stayed with their mother Ingrid in Uptown, while his little brother Daysav stayed in Rogers Park with their father. However, Around the years 2010 and 2011, Pappy moved to Rogers Park to be with his father Ryan and little brother Day South. This move was actually the reason why Pappy became involved in the criminal life and became a member of the gangs that housed in the area. That nigga like he didn't want to be there. <laughs> As you all know, Pappy was a rapper, a really good rapper. Already as a small child, Pappy was drawn to music and hip-hop. In the household where he lived with his family, hip-hop was often played, which also characterized the entire neighborhood. Already as a four-year-old, Pappy started playing with music, he started writing lyrics and rapping. His older brother, B.U. Double, also used to rap and write his own lyrics and actually taught Pappy how to do it. In an interview with Pappy's little brother, Day Sav, in the podcast No Jumper, he says that Pappy used to sit with a dictionary to learn new words and figure out which words rhyme with each other. In this way, Pappy learned how to play with words, which he would eventually become a master at doing. 
I personally think that this musical background Pappy had is a big reason why he was as good as he actually was. Many of today's rappers from Chicago started rapping three or four years ago, and their music is very much based on their reputation on the street. However, Pappy had been doing this since he was a small child, before he and his brothers even knew that street life existed. Just as I mentioned earlier, Pappy moved to Rogers Park to live with his father and little brother. Pappy's mother, Ingrid, said in an interview that Pappy was a good student with straight A's in grade school. Pappy did not start to get into trouble until high school, however, he was involved in petty crimes such as theft and fights, just as many other criminals begin their careers. Pappy went to Sullivan High School which is located in Rogers Park. It was at that school, according to his mother, that he began to hang out with the wrong people who were already involved in gang life. This has seemed to be a pattern through all my videos about gang members and rappers, it is often when you start going to high school when their real problems begin. You become affiliated with the wrong type of crowd, fights with other young people from other schools and areas begin as later leads to shootings and eventually murders which leads to a vicious circle of killing. We have yeah, that's around the time where you able to make that decision. High school. That's around the time when niggas do make that decision. High school. <clears throat> Not even speaking on Pappy's case, but a lot of niggas do that shit to fit in. To fit in. They be a part of some shit, like being a part of a football team ain't there. Goddamn. But, uh... For the my bad, my bad, but for the most part, niggas be wanting to fit in and shit, or be a part of something. And you know, what I mean, at a teenage perspective, I understand it, but as a grown man now, hell no, <laughs> it's just different. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm grown, man. I'm 25, right? I'm like, if I ain't fucking with it, I ain't fucking with it. If you don't fuck with me, all right, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to just, you know, it's just shit like that. I don't want to hang with your ass. Or, I don't know, as a grown man, I just like, all right, man. You know what I'm saying? Fuck, fuck that shit. But as a teenager, I get it type shit. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Seen it on the south side between STL slash EBT and O Block, on the east side between Black Mob and No Limit, and now the north side. Sullivan High School is a public school and not directly known as the best school in Chicago. Actually, the high school is ranked within the bottom 50% of all 3,672 schools in Illinois. With 730 students and only 36 classroom teachers, less than 5% of the students achieved proficiency in math and reading slash language which is lower than the Illinois average of 35%. As with many other schools in Chicago, there were often fights, Pappy ended up in fights several times, and there is also a video left on YouTube from 2011 where Lyro Mac and Gene O'Mac from DFG fought with Santana from PBG. Please show it, please show it, cause I'm about to go get it. As you all know, Pappy claimed both DFG and PBG, mostly DFG though. According to Taysav, Pappy was out on the streets with his brother BU Double in Uptown before moving to Rogers Park where PBG resides. It was in Uptown that he began to get to know several people who would later become DFG and who became his friends for life. That is the reason why he claimed DFG more than PBG. He was brought up in the TFG area in Uptown and was originally from the buildings on Lawrence. Pappy also used to sell drugs in Uptown with his brother BU Double even though he lived in Rogers Park. Pappy was really the one that later on brought DFG and PBG together. Much like Duck. I hate when you like bring groceries in, so you gotta leave the door open, and just one little bitch get in. I mean just one little bitch with STL slash EBT and Jaro, 051 and Mob. 
Don't get me wrong. TFG and PBG were still cool with each other before Pappy, but Pappy made them even closer to each other, just like Ham Tang, D Rose and King Von did with O'Block and 600. You would be able to compare TFG and PBG's relationship with O'Block and 600. Pappy also went to school with several PBG and DFG members in Rogers Park. In order for you to understand the whole story better, I will now tell the story of PBG and TFG why they were formed, who they are allied with and who they beef with. PBG, which stands for Pooh Bear Gang, is a large GD set in Rogers Park that has a large territory with Greenleaf as the north border, North Shore as the south border, Ashland to the west and Glenwood to the east. The name PBG came after Pooh Bear got shot and killed by Munchie and Murda from Lock City on January 20th, 2012. Pooh Bear Gang was created to honor his memory. His death caused several GD sets like B Block, G Block, Pratt Bratz and Farwell Mafia to click up and form PBG. Pooh Bear was a member of the gang ICG which was the original name of the gang, just as Wick City was the name before it became a block. However, they are a bit more fragmented, there are some people that only claim ICG and not PBG, and many new shorties from ICG do not even claim PBG since they did not know them. So you could say that PBG was a branch of ICG but which later became its own gang. You could compare it to when Taekwin World was at first just a branch of Jaro City, just like the 2-2 gang, but which later became its own gang. ICG stands for Insane Cutthroat Gangsters, However, they're not insane, they're renegade but not insane, just ICG by name. Between the 1970s and 80s, Rogers Park became one of Chicago's most vicious neighborhoods as several gangs from the west and south sides such as the Black Pea Stones, Brazers, Gangster Disciples, Latin Kings, Simon City Royals and Vice Lords moved into the area. Much like NLMB, PBG is a big set with a lot of members and generations that stretch back to the 70s, before it was PBG, back when it was called Farwell Family. PBG has multiple members with multiple bodies, they have people like Spaz, Sean, Bang Dehida, Camo and Streets, all very close friends to Pappy. Pappy was also close to Pooh Bear, Pooh Bear's dad, Too Easy was a big figure in Uptown where Pappy, B.U. Double. Laro, Sheen, Biggs and the rest of DFG are from, so a lot of people were close to Pooh Bear and therefore repped PBG. Pooh Bear was also a known killer and is said by many people to have killed at least two people from Slutty Boys. Bro, how the fuck do we get this shit? Y'all don't be wondering that? Y'all don't be wondering that? I can't be the only nigga. Alright. Say my way spaz. Hey. No. He that nigga. If you know you this one of them if you know you know type things. He that nigga. This nigga too. This nigga rolled up on there and fuck it. Yeah, if y'all if you know, you know. If you know, you know, type shit. PBG is closely allied with DFG, OTE and SK and pretty much beefs with everyone around them. The different constellations have changed a lot on the north side over the years, just like on the south side of the city. Gangs have fallen out with each other, new wars have been created and gangs have found new allies. 
it is almost always a constant change in the gang wars. For example, TFG used to have an alliance with High City but that ended in recent years. Another example is Hula Gang who used to be cool with both DFG and PBG but is at war with them now. The reason for this was because a PBG and TFG members went on a drill together with a Hula Gang membe. Five from Hula Gang froze up and ran which resulted in Troy from DFG getting shot and killed, allegedly by Itch from Lil 4 Mob in March 2015. It was later killed in November 2015 by King Shuda, Sheen and Don Don from TFG. That's a perfect example of how two gangs can fall out with each other. PBG's main rivals in the past have been Lock City and Lil 4 Mob, however, in recent times the focus has been mostly on Lil 4 Mob and High City. Lock City, or Loyalty Over Cash, is historically a GD set that has been around since the 90s and houses on Paulina, Howard and Juneway. However, nowadays, BDs who originally come from the south side have moved up north to link up with Lock City due to the fact that many have relatives there, therefore Lock City has become a rather mixed set in recent days. Lock City is a really deep set that is at war with PBG, DFG, Birchwood, OTE, SK and High City. Lock City's war with PBG sparked off in December 2008 when Freaky from ICG slash LDub got stabbed to death by Bleezy from Lock City and Montreal. Both was arrested for the murder, however, Breezy was freed from jail in 2011. Montreal is still locked up. According to rumors, it was Romeo from GVG who set Freaky up to be killed and that's why Guttaville and ICG had fallen out. It's a motherfucker, man. He literally said one nigga set them up. These streets are motherfucker, man. I can see y'all in the comments now. This nigga snore can't read. <laughs> but I'm like, still, that's most my man's. You can't go like that. Something got to give. So right to Howard, we going to go right back because sitting, 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 ain't going to do, uh, ain't going to never bring my bro back. Or pretty freaky. TFG is a set of GDs in the area of Lawrence and Winthrop. Their boundaries stretch from Argyle to the north, Leland to the south, Broadway to the west and Sheridan to the east. TFG has a long hit. history that goes back to the 70s. Before TFG became a thing in 2009 to 2010, it was originally a Harrison Gents hood back in the 70s and early 80s. GD migration to uptown took over the gents numbers and many gents flipped GD or switched hoods. The area itself is very mixed, mostly with both black and white residents as well as a mix of rich and poor living together. Members of DFG mainly come from the 4848 and Winthrop building which is mostly a low income building. TFG has a lot of members, many killers, robbers and whatnot. As you all know, Pappy Duel claimed his hood along with PBG. Even though TFG and PBG aren't as close as they used to be back when Pappy was alive, they are still allies and share the same enemies. TFG beef with Hula Gang, Lil 4 Mob, High City, Log City, GVG slash Day Day World and TBG. Some of TFG's main killers were King Shooter, Biggs, Savage Sheen and none other than Young Pappy, which may be a surprise for many people. Pappy really lived that life he rapped about which makes his music even more interesting, because you know there is stories and real pressure behind the lyrics, much like King Von and L.A. Capone. 
Young Pappy is said to have been both a shooter and murderer. Now back to you. Hold on. Because I feel like this shit about to get good. Let me go get my mind right or something. Young Pappy or rather the year 2012, when things really started to heat up and Pappy, by the age of 17, became a shooter. Remember the date January 20th, 2012, because it was the date when Pappy's close friend Pooh Bear, only 15 years old, from ICG got shot and killed by Munchie from Lock City. Police found Pooh Bear in the alley on June Way Darris with multiple gunshot wounds. Pooh Bear whose real name was Anton Sanders, was taken to an area hospital where he was declared dead. Munchie and Pooh Bear actually used to be good friends with each other, even after Freaky was killed, but after several fights at Sullivan High School that later led to shootings, it ended with Munchie allegedly killing Pooh Bear despite the fact that Munchie still claimed that he's not on that with Pooh. Nigga, what the fuck? Some real friend uh, friend of me, friends turn enemies type shit. This shit is mind blowing. I'm flabbergasted. This shit right here is egregious. I just want to use that shit in the video. My bad. Relax, relax. I see the comment now. Relax. Anyway, though. This shit. Just, just, yeah, I heard the nigga talking on the phone. I might as well stop recording. It's 4 o'clock in the morning. You will think niggas be asleep, but hell no. Anyway, but, uh. Yeah, man, that shit wild as fuck. He said they used to be best for our good friends. Good friends is. You pull up on them and chill. That's some good friend shit, right? If I'm, I'm assuming, get out chills, you know, smoke, whatever, whatever. That shit wild, bro. I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. Pooh was killed in the midst of trying to trade guns. However, just a few days before Pooh Bear was killed, he was mocking Lock City on his Facebook page by writing dialogues, F the Ops. A body had not been dropped in four years between Lock City and ICG after the murder of Freaky. Now the war was started again and it was actually the murder of Pooh Bear that was really the start of a decade of robbery, shootings and murders between the two gangs, and young Pappy would eventually take revenge on Lock City. This story will actually mostly be about Pappy, PBGDFG and the war with Lock City, since that was the war Pappy was focused on. He really hated them after what Munchie did to Pooh Bear and made that very clear in many of his songs. But of course there are also other important deaths with other gangs involved in the story, and as usual I will also go into different sidetracks but for the most part I will focus on Young Pappy and the beef DFG PBG had and has with Lock City. I ain't got a on that bit. In the year 2012, Pappy spent most of the time in juvenile detention due to a gun charge. But since young Pappy was a minor at the time, there isn't any public documentation of it. This says a lot though, Pappy had started playing with guns and probably using them as well. When I said that the murder of Pooh Bear really sparked off the war between PBG DFG and Lock City, I really meant it. Just two days after the assassination, before even ICG had adopted the nickname Pooh Bear Gang to honor him and mourn him, ICG went on the hunt and killed two members of Lock City, Dion and John John. However, some claim that Dion and John John weren't members of Lock City and that they were in the wrong place at the wrong time. John John and Dion drove around in an SUV and stopped at a traffic light in the Rogers Park neighborhood. Suddenly shots started to ring off and both the driver, Dion, and the passenger, John John, were shot. They tried to drive away from the scene but crashed a short distance away. John John was pronounced dead on the scene and Dion, who only got shot in the leg, was taken to St. Francis Hospital in Evanston where he was pronounced dead even though early reports originally said he was in fair condition. 
According to rumors, the alleged killers were D Mac and Magic City from PBG. Bruh. Now, if I'm not mistaken, bruh, ain't Everson a city like out of Chicago? Or like a suburb of Chicago? Would it take like 20, 30 minutes to get there in Chicago traffic? Why the fuck would they take them there? I'm pretty sure Chicago got. I forgot, bro. Y'all shit set up different up there. Like, different areas can't, uh, different age groups and shit can't go to certain hospitals and shit. <sighs> that shit crazy. In my city, the nearest hospital, outside of a children's hospital, but the nearest hospital, you're going there. If you're over there by Methodist, you're going there. If you're over there by Eskenazi, you're going there. You know what I'm saying? If you're near fucking um, St. Vincent, you're going there. If you're near Community North, Community East, whatever, you're going there. You know what I'm saying? This shit crazy. What? They must ring off like all the hospitals. <coughs> Damn In 2015, dude. Magic City was arrested on drug charges and was sentenced to seven years in prison. Once young Pappy came out of juvenile detention he really started to get active in the streets. He was on the hunt for one specific member, Munchie from Lock City, or any Lock City member for that matter. Many people cannot accept that many rappers are actually with the shits, because they are so public and show off their personality that people cannot believe that they have actually done things. I don't wanna Y'all might believe that! Oh! I know some some of these niggas, I know, like, he probably did some shit. He probably got a robbery off. Got a, got a, he probably robbed a, a dope boy or something where he from and shit. He probably and did some, yeah. Some of these niggas, not all these niggas. But some of these niggas, yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, like, some of these niggas, they be, they be from, like, the city, though, like. Some of these niggas probably be from uh Memphis, uh St. Louis, Chicago, New York. And yeah, like, oh he's from such and such. So he gotta have done something. No, it don't work like that, pal. He's not that guy, pal. He's not that guy, pal. It don't work like that, pal. <laughs> no, it don't. The fuck? Best believe that the majority of the Chicago rappers actually raps about real things and do not lie in their raps. What I want to get to is that young Pappy was really with it. He talked about real life events in his songs. So when Pappy came out, he really went crazy, much like Vaughn did when he came out of jail in 2012. However, on April 5th, 2012, PBG lost another member, James. James was gunned down in a drive-by shooting in the Rogers Park neighborhood. The alleged shooter in this murder was yet again, Munchie from Lock City. James pleaded guilty to shooting a nine-year-old on June 26, 2009. The boy he shot happened to be the little brother of a Lock City member which may be a reason why he was shot and killed by Lock City. So now Munchie had now dropped two people from PBG in the same year, just within a couple of months. PBG and TFG were now really out for blood. You could say that PBG were almost shocked by how pressured they were by Lock City. However, PBG, TFG but especially Pappy would get their revenge. It would not come until a year after the murder of Pooh Bear and James. Now we come to the year 2013, the year Pappy turned 18. A lot of things happened in 2013 and the tables turned. Now it was PBG and DFG who started pressure Lock City and people like Spaz, Bang to hit and not least Pappy himself started passing out a lot of smoke. On the 8th of June 2013, 
TFG would score on Hazel Mob, which would eventually result in the formation of Lil 4 Mob. Jeremiah Moore, also known as Lil 4, was a 24-year-old 4.C.H. member of Hazel Mob. Lil 4 has, among other things, been suspected of shooting up Hula Gang and TFG. He was even arrested for a shooting back in 2011 where Lil 4 and Dontanius spotted a rival gang member and decided to open fire across the busy intersection. Whoever their target was got away. A young mother was not as lucky, she was shot in the leg. Her baby escaped the bullet by a matter of inches. Lil 4 was released a year later in February 2012. A little more than a year later after he was released, he was shot dead by DFG. Lito, Biggs and Lero from DFG are rumored to be the ones who killed Lil 4 and shot another person in connection with the murder, he survived. Biggs was only 13 at the time. Hazel Mob later adopted the nickname Lil 4 Mob to honor his memory. A few weeks later after Lito allegedly killed Lil 4, he was shot himself, according to rumors it was number 4 from Lil 4 Mob. Lito was taken to the hospital and fortunately he survived. PBG were still looking for Munchie and in 2013 they were close to putting him away. Magic City from PBG caught Munchie outside and managed to shoot him in the wrist. Munchie luckily managed to run away and was able to take himself to the hospital where he received treatment. shit like that. Why the f What's up? What the hell going on out here? If I see it on once or twice more, God damn it, I know something up. I know something up then. Let me just sit back and chill though. Someone who was very active in 2013 was Young Pappy from TFG PBG. According to rumors, Young Pappy shot Lucky from Locke City in his back and thigh. Fortunately, Lucky survived due to prompt treatment at the hospital. Young Pappy actually rapped about this situation in the song competition. He said the following, Better ask Lucky what will happen when I drill shit. Like I said, Better believe that most of the rap lyrics from Chicago are based from real-life events. Pappy was really a threat to his rivals already in 2013 and became an even bigger threat later on in this story. However, in June 2013, young Pappy was convicted of felony unlawful use of a weapon and sentenced to two years on probation. Pappy later violated that probation and was sentenced to a year in prison. However, he would have time to do even more in 2013 despite being sentenced to two years on probation. On July 5, 2013, just one day after the 4th of July, the deadly violence continued, the PBG would finally get their revenge after the murder of James. Elliot Frazier, also known as Lily from Locke City, was shot to death in Rogers Park about 5.30 a.m. Friday. Police found him bleeding from gunshot wounds in the 7400 block of North Paulina Street and he was sadly pronounced dead on the scene. Two famous and notorious killers from PBG were allegedly behind the murder, banged a hit on streets. Nine days later it was time again. PBG DFG would yet again score on Lock City. This murder has become well known to many people who follow the Chicago drill scene, why you might wonder. Well, because young Pappy was rumored to be one of the killers. It was on July 14, 2013 that young Pappy allegedly caught his first body. The victim who was murdered was identified as Blake Lamb of the 7600 block of North Bosworth Avenue a well-known member of Locke City. 
Blake was walking on the sidewalk in the 1600 block of West Jonquil Terrace, in the Rogers Park neighborhood. A vehicle drove up next to the sidewalk and one or more people started shooting from inside the car. Blake got hit by several bullets which caused him to fall to the ground, then one or two people jumped out of the car and stood over Blake and shot him eight times in the face. Like many other murders in Chicago, Blake was brutally murdered. The people who killed him really wanted him dead and send a message to Lock City. Just like I mentioned earlier, Pappy was one of the alleged killers along with Spaz, Face and Lil Sean from PBG. According to rumors, Spaz and maybe Lil Sean were the ones that jumped out of the vehicle to finish the job. It was really a gruesome murder and Blake was sadly pronounced dead on the scene. A Rogers Park resident, Christine, 38, said she heard at least four gunshots from her apartment about a block away from the park. She said she seen Blake hang out in that park before with others about his age. Christine stated that she generally feels safe in her neighborhood, but in the summer, things can get really dangerous. The hotter, the more violent it gets she said. Another resident in the Roger right, Park neighborhood, right. a 56-year-old man, who recently witnessed a shooting in the park along with his 10-year-old son also stated that he and his son don't feel safe living in the neighborhood. The disrespect towards Blake was gruesome after his death. Pappy mocked him multiple times in his song. In a freestyle that Pappy released in April 2015, about a month before he was killed, Pappy rapped, Give you hollow tips have your shit looking like Blake's face. There are actually quite a few indications that Pappy actually put bullets in Blake's body. Pappy's brother I'd talked about earlier, Sav, who is also a rapper, released a song called Letter to Pappy on the 31st of May 2016. Basically a year after Pappy died, in that song Tay Sav rapped, they should be mad because he rearranged their homie face which seems to refer to the murder of Blake. Rumors that Pappy was one of the killers have been circulating since Pappy was alive, which may indicate some truth. However, there are people who claim that Pappy was on house arrest, some people claim that he was there but did not let off any shots, and some claim that he was not there at all. The house arrest rumor is false, Pappy was on probation but not on house arrest. As with all murders, there are different theories about who was there, you decide for yourself what you want to believe. However, there is one thing that drops all these heinous insults towards Blake after the murder. Pappy and some other PBG members went back to the crime scene once the paramedics arrived, and took a video of Blake lying under the white sheet. According to the police, the PBG members got video of the body with the sheet over it while saying things like come on, get up Blake, get up. I thought you did not lay down for anyone. The video was posted on Facebook and other internet blogs but was later deleted and taken off the internet. The police it's never off the internet. Oh, it's out there. It's out there. It's never off the internet, though. Police were even questioning some of the PBG members, including Pappy, about the video. We on play safe. It's been how how you should looking like Blake face. So take it easy. But you ain't light easy. Am I risk me? The reason Blake was so mocked as he actually was after his death was because he was actually a big member of Lock City. He was well respected across his neighborhood and was even rumored to have shot up PBG's hood several times, and also beat up and robbed people from that area. Blake was actually the first major body PBG caught from Lock City. Just like I mentioned earlier in the video, PBG had other bodies on the LZ at the time, but it was mostly low-key members, 
People who were not particularly active in the streets, Blake was the first time PBG made Lock City as a gang actually feel the pain they felt when Pooh Bear, Freaky and James died. This is the reason why they mocked him so much after his death, Lock City really felt it. Pappy remained active for the rest of 2013. In November it was rumored that young Pappy along with other PBG and DFG members shot up Day Day World several times and was specifically looking for a member named Lil Duke. Day Day World, or GVG Guttaville, is a renegade GD set with their main block located on Thorndale and Winthrop. The DDW area is very mixed with the Section 8 housings and wealthy expensive apartments. This makes it much harder for DDW members to post up outside. This was one of the reasons why Pappy had a hard time sliding on them and did it without success. Day Day World was a nickname adopted by GVG to honor a fallen member from GVG called Day Day, who got shot and killed on September 18, 2012. The killers were rumored to have been Bird from Hula Gang and Big P from Stoneville. Lil Duke is a real hothead from Day Day World, who really went crazy after Day Day was shot and killed in 2012. When he was only 14 years old he was charged with an attempted murder and is rumored to have killed Tima from Hula Gang in July 2015 together with other members from GVG, Lock City and Lil 4 Mob. Lil Duke was and still is a rapper, he has released songs only since 2012 when Day Day was still alive. They used to be in the studio together to record music. For those of you who do not know, Lil Duke is a cousin of Duddy from PBG who was close to Pappy and several Jaro City and STL slash EBT members since he was a cousin with FBG Duck. Sadly, Duddy was killed at the end of March 2019 by Wild Buddy, Urban Ant Dog from BLVD. Lil Duke, despite being in the rival gang, paid respect to PBG Duddy. Duddy and Duke were very close even though they were from rival gangs, some even say that Duddy kept PBG from trying to kill him after the murder of two cups. Lil Duke and Pappy had a very personal beef with each other, however, it is difficult to know how and exactly when it started. Both have mocked one another in songs back in 2013 and 2014. In Lil Duke's remix of the song Hang With Me, he rapped, Lil Pappy you think you gangster, saying he gone stretch me. I'm ready, I keep it on me. Young Pappy also mocked him and Day Day in the song competition which was released in December 2013. In that song Pappy rapped, F Day Day, him hot as shit along with F Lil Duke, these shots for him. That song was released just a month after Two Cups was killed, allegedly by Lil Duke himself. After Pappy's death, Lil Duke continued to mock him even more and was incredibly hated by Pappy's fans. TFG and PBG were and still are desperate to get him. There are also rumors that Duke and other Day Day members had sexual intercourse with Pappy's sister back in 2013. Nigga, At least what? Duke stated that was the case on his Facebook page. However, what many do not know is that Lil Duke and Pappy used to be cool to each other, Pappy used to hang out with them on their block. Like I said earlier in my videos, it's incredibly common for rival gang members to be friends when they were younger. Pappy and Munchie also used to be cool with each other. In a side note, Lil Duke was actually close to getting killed in 2012 when he got shot in the chest by Skrills from Hula Gang. Fortunately he survived. Why this nigga biting his lip?
and no look happy. If you think you gangsta, say you gon' scratch me, I'm ready. I keep it on me, boy, that shit addy. Just like I mentioned before, it was rumored. Hold up, I'll be right back. Yeah, I know we in a whole new apartment, uh, whole new different room. I know, I know. Keep it going. Rumored that will do. Uh. Popped out and opened fire, striking both two cups and Leto. He then hopped back into the car and sped away from the scene. Two Cups was rushed to St. Francis Hospital in Evanston, where he was pronounced dead. Uh, I remember this part. Just like I mentioned before, it was rumored that young Pappy and DFG had shot up Day Day World numerous times in November, 2013. This led to Day Day World and especially Lil Duke, since he had a personal beef with Pappy, to take revenge on TFG and Pappy. Just as I mentioned before, it was rumored that young Pappy and DFG had shot up Day Day World numerous times in November, 2013. This led to Day Day World and especially Lil Duke since he had a personal beef with Pappy, to take revenge on TFG. During a chat on December 1st, 20-year-old Mensa Kaifel, also known as Two Cups, told his dad he'd be taking a friend in a wheelchair to the social security office the next day. Jilly Aburi, Mensa's father, did not think much of it. His oldest son had always liked helping people he said. The next day, Mensa's mother saw him at 9 o'clock eating his breakfast. That was the last time she saw him. According to the police, Mensa along with his friend, whom the police did not mention by name but I know it was Leto from DFG, were standing near the intersection of North Broadway and West Glen Lake Avenue when a light-colored van pulled up. It is rumored that Lil Duke hopped out and opened fire, striking both Two Cups and Leto, he then hopped back into the car and sped away from the scene. Two Cups was okay, rushed to St. Francis Hospital in Evanston, where he was pronounced dead. Lito was taken in serious to critical condition to advocate Illinois Medical Center. Fortunately Lito survived. However, a source said that the person who began shooting at the man may have been in a wheelchair, which doesn't make sense since other witnesses have stated that a gunman hopped out of a van. However, Ken Anderson, who owns a shop nearby, said that he saw three men, including one in a wheelchair, speaking to each other. It happened so fast. There was some type of altercation, gunshots and we saw the two guys running west. A man doing work at the restaurant tried to help the person in the wheelchair who may have been shot in the hand or wrist. My guess is that Two Cups was there with Lito along with the person he helped with the wheelchair when a van pulled up and Lil Duke hopped out and shot them up. The others in the van are rumored to have been Na Na and Uno from GVG. I have also heard that the intended target in this shooting was actually Leto who was an outstanding member from DFG, he was the one that allegedly created Lil 4 Mob which I mentioned earlier in the story. Leto was killed this year about a month ago and he was the brother of Big Red who was killed in 2015. Young Pappy was totally heartbroken after the death of Two Cups, they were extremely close and Pappy later dropped three mixtapes named Two Cups, Part 1, 2 and 3 to honor his friend's memory. Part 3 was released after Pappy's death. The first mixtape was dropped in August 2014 and really became an iconic mixtape, much like Finally Rich, Welcome to Faze Aloud and Free Crack. The mixtape contained iconic songs like Competition where he dis Lil Duke, Shorty with the 40, Old Slaves, 
where he mocked Blake with a line we made Blake block with a face shot, and not least the song named after his fallen friend, Two Cups. He started the song by saying R.I.P. to my big brother Two Cups. Two Cups was a known drug dealer in the area and brought in a lot of money which Pappy referred to with the text, they took my big brother Mensa, I'm thinking like why? Was it the money? Was it the cars? Was it the way he was stunting? Was he flexing too hard? Was it the way he was finessing, trying to stack or starve? Pappy was really a yeah, lyrical mastermind that. along with having a... I, I remember that shit. Remember, uh, I want to say 2016, 2017. I was doing a lot of videos on Young Pappy. Masterful flow and a charisma much like King Vaughn. My personal opinion is that Young Pappy deserves incredibly much more credit when it comes to music. After the murder of two cops, TFG adopted the name Mensa Mafia, Mensa Millionaires and Two Cups Gang to honor his memory. After the murder of Two Cups, TFG was desperate to kill Lil Duke. Young Pappy continued to slide on Day Day World. However, only two months after the murder of Two Cups, Young Pappy was subjected to an assassination attempt. Pappy along with two others who got shot survived but his friend Kyo from PBG was killed in the situation. This is the infamous so-called McDonald's situation. Kyo and Pappy along with other PBG members, including D-Mac, were on their way to a Rogers Park McDonald's about 3.30 p.m. Wednesday, the 5th of February 2014. One or two masked gunmen opened fire at the group, striking four teens. Three of them survived but one of them didn't make it, Markio Carr, 17, who got shot in the back of his head. Young Pappy was one of the three teens who luckily survived the shooting, he got shot in the arm. A 15-year-old girl was shot multiple times and an 18-year-old man was shot in his back, both survived. According to a police source, Young Pappy was actually the member who was the target in the shooting and since the alleged shooters were King Ty and Munchie from Lock City, there is much to suggest that Pappy was actually the target due to his alleged involvement in the murder of Blake from Lock City, and all the mockery that followed in his songs. Markio Carr's family said they were upset about news reports saying the shooting was gang related. Keo was not in a gang according to his family members. Mark Keo a junior at Amundsen High School, was the third of five children. His older sister, Desika, described her brother as outgoing and very funny. He had a big heart and was never afraid to speak his mind she said. She also mentioned that he liked sports, especially basketball and swimming and that he wanted to join the Marines. Kia's mother said her son had just gotten home from school Wednesday. She was starting to cook dinner and her son asked for a couple bucks to get some food at the McDonald's just a few blocks from their Rogers Park home, and that was the last time she saw him. Didn't he just pass away? If I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong, but and he just passed away. On March 26, 2014, young Pappy was in court on a reckless conduct charge and got sentenced to 60 days in jail. He got out on June 3rd which means that Pappy got to celebrate his 19th birthday in jail. This also means that young Pappy had nothing to do with the murder of DZ from Lil Four Mob, which many have speculated about. DZ dissed Pappy a lot on social media back in the days, Pappy started mocking him back in songs once he died. In the song Killer he rapped, I got DZ in my swisher. DZ's killer is rumored to have been D-Ray. Because I ain't rapped that line so much. Uh, oh, I like our mister. I got. Yeah. I ain't rapped that line so much. I swear y'all can find footage of me rapping that shit. 
I'm gonna take that shit down. Mac Deuce and PJ, all from no, Hula Gang. <laughs> While Pappy no, was inside, PBG would score on Lock City. 16-year-old Kino Glass from Lock City was shot and killed in a drive-by shooting early Tuesday morning on April 15, 2014. The alleged killer was the well-known PBG member Lil Sean. Friends of Kino said that he was an aspiring rapper who did not deserve to be shot and killed. A longtime friend of Kino, Kenneth, said that Kino loved everyone around him. He did not deserve it. I could not even stop crying last night. He was a little brother to me, Kenneth said. Kino, who went by the rap name KP Lashore, had been returning home from an interview regarding his music career. About 2.40 a.m. he knocked on the first floor windows of his friend's apartment in the 7600 block of North Ashland Avenue. Then four or five gunshots rang out from a gray minivan that was passing by. Kino was sadly pronounced dead on the scene. A suspect in the shooting was questioned. That suspect was allegedly Lil Sean from PBG. Lil Sean was sentenced to 55 years in prison for killing a man called Valen Francis in front of his wife and three kids in 2015. He will be released in 2070. Lil Sean really was a ruthless member who didn't care about anything, didn't matter if it was broad daylight or if he saw a rival with kids or girlfriend, it was on sight all the time for Lil Sean. However, it is more to tell about that murder that I will come to later on in the story. Just a month after Pappy was released from prison on June 3rd, Pappy was subjected to another assassination attempt, however, this time he was not touched by any bullet, instead an innocent photographer who took photos of Pappy was killed. On June 12th, Pappy was walking down Devon Avenue near his dad's house, Will Lewis, a 28-year-old photographer, was taking photos of the rapper as gunfire erupted. A car passed them and spotted young Pappy. A CVL from TBG named Eric Vaughn, also known as Mook C, one of the creators of TBG, allegedly handed a gun to a passenger in his car and told him wet that t-shirt up. Pappy managed to escape the gunfire, but Will didn't, he was struck by multiple bullets and instantly collapsed on the street. According to a witness, two gunmen tried to chase down Pappy and followed him south down Glenwood Avenue without success. The witness were able to photograph the two as they fled down a nearby residential street. Eric Vaughn tried to pick up the shooter and the other passenger, but had to park his car and was arrested nearby as he tried to flee on foot. Mook C, along with Denzel Burke, 15, and Michael Phillip, 17, all got charged with the murder of Will Lewis, this after Denzel, also known as Kobe, allegedly snitching on Mook and Michael also known as Tay Black. Mook C, Kobe and Tay Black were all members of TBG. However, Kobe, who was only 15 at the time and allegedly snitched on Mook C and Tay Black, is free right now and is currently living in Peru and working as a forex trader, away from the gang life and is no longer claiming TBG. So his own niggas try to, like, end him? Hold on.
Just 10 days after the attempted murder of young Pappy, PBG would lose a member, Pooh Bear's brother Antoine Sanders, also known as Pep. However, there are many indications that this was an internal settlement between an older murder mob ICG and Pep from PBG. Many have also speculated that it was the ELS, D-Block or SBMG who were behind the murder, but those rumors are according to what I have heard false. Some say that SBMG killed him in retaliation for the murder of Pig from SBMG who PBG was responsible for. Antoine was sitting in the passenger seat of a car near the 8000 block of McCormick Boulevard. Suddenly, a male in black clothing riding a maroon motorcycle pulled up next to him and shot him in his chest. When police arrived at the crime scene, Antoine had already been driven to Presence St. Francis Hospital by the person he was in the car with. Sadly he did not make it and was pronounced dead. After the murder of photographer Will Lewis where young Pappy was the real target. The police became eager to try to get young Pappy off the streets, but they did not have anything to charge him with. This was the second time in just a few months that young Pappy was the target in a shooting, but where another innocent person has been murdered instead as many also believe that Kyo was an innocent bystander. Police were frustrated, young Pappy brought a lot of heat to the north side and Rogers Park in particular. However, Pappy was now looking for revenge and blood. For the murder of his close friend Pooh Bear and now after them both attempts to kill him, where Munchie and King Ty from Lock City came closest when they managed to shoot him in the arm. The person Pappy really wanted to get rid of was Munchie. Munchie who allegedly was behind the murder of Pooh Bear, the murder of Keo, the murder of James, shooting Pappy in his arm and several other shootings. Munchie was his main target along with Lil Duke from Day Day World. Two months after the attempted murder of Pappy in connection with the murder of Will Lewis, Pappy finally got his revenge. On September 11, 2014, young Pappy would allegedly catch his second body, if you count Blake from Lock City, yet again it would be a member from Lock City and not just any member, it was young Pappy's main target, Munchie. About 12.30 p.m., Police responded to a call of a person shot in the 1600 block of West Juneway Terrace. When the police arrived at the scene they found a 19-year-old man who had been shot and was unresponsive, that person was Glenford Johnson, also known as Munchie. According to witnesses, Munchie was standing in the courtyard of a building at 1662 Juneway Terrace. Suddenly a car pulled up, shots started to ring out. Screaming and yelling could be heard as Munchie tried to run and escape the gunshots that came towards him. Sadly, Munchie was struck in the chest as he tried to run into a hallway where he later collapsed and lost consciousness. Munchie was sadly pronounced dead on the scene. According to rumors that have flourished for a long time, there were four people on the hit. Those four people were allegedly Bangda Hitta, Mook and Mosey from PBG and Young Pappy from TFG. Who of them shot Munchie is very unclear, there are rumors that both Bang and Pappy shot him while others say that it was only Bang who let off shots. According to witnesses to the shooting, there were chaotic scenes after the shooting. A local named Robert said that it was insane and that there were so many people who surrounded the scene. Robert also stated that he never felt unsafe in his neighborhood, despite all the shooting that occurred in the area. So, this is up north. This shit, all this shit happening up north in Chicago. Now, I know, like, where they from, it ain't, like, the best part. But, like, it's really, like, a mixed area of some sort, ain't it? Something along the lines. Help me out. Help me out. Please help me out. Please help me out.
a former Chicago politician, Joe Moore, who was the first to be elected to Chicago City Council as the alderman for the 49th Ward, which includes the majority of Rogers Park and portions of West Ridge, in 1991 and got re-elected six times before losing to challenger Maria Haddon in 2019. A few days after the murder of Munchie, Joe wrote in an email to constituents that police believe that Glenford was allegedly responsible for several shootings in the neighborhood and that he was allegedly one of the top leaders of a local street gang. Moore did not identify the gang Glenford was believed to have led, but as we already know and as I told earlier in the video, the prominent street gang in the area north of Howard is called Lock City of which Munchie was a member. Police said that the Locks are in a long-standing conflict with a more savvy area gang called the ICGs, or as we know them, PBG. Vanda Hitta, whose real name is Keith Hare, who is a member of PBG but is also a rapper and who was rumored to have been on the hit, his car was found in flames on Lund Avenue just two days after the murder. Joe Moore wrote that a forensic analysis of the car did not reveal evidence that an incendiary device was used in the attack that was directed at Keith, however, a witness to the explosion claimed on the contrary, that an incendiary device actually caused the explosion in the car. A local named Craig, who also lived on the block, said he saw Bangda hit a run to his burning car while the fire department extinguished the flames. Bangda hit a later posted a Facebook status where he wrote, Wow, y'all blow up cars. But we blow up bodies. I ain't angry about it though. Craig was also convinced that it was some type of incendiary device that caused this. This created a great deal of concern in the area as many believe that it was only God's providence that no one was injured or killed in the explosion. My own theory says that this was a direct response to the murder of Munchie and the several mockery from Bang to Hitta, but you cannot be completely sure. Mockery towards Munchie and Lock City reigned in after the murder, both from TFG and PBG. One person who absolutely did not hold back on the mockery was of course Young Pappy, who both mocked Munchie on social media and in songs. In Young Pappy's remix of Chief Keef's song Finito, Pappy rapped, Where the F is Munchie? I ain't seen him. Tell him all that shit you talking. You ain't mean it. And in the song Afterlife Part 3, which I... And that's crazy because I'll turn this shit on right now and just be. I know that'd be word for word. No, I got to take that lot back because I ain't listened to it in about a year or so. But, my nigga. Fuck. Personally, think is one of Pappy's best songs. He raps right there on the floor where he lay. Tell him get up. I know he cannot. Munchie. The way he got hit up remind me of Blake. This line alone made many people start speculating that Pappy was one of the killers. However, there is one song by Young Pappy with a text that really struck me, I think you can guess which, of course I am talking about the song Angels, which was the last song Young Pappy recorded before his death according to his brother B.U. Double. In the song, Pappy mocks Munchie several times. For example, he rapped put Munchie in the air, put Munchie in the air, how you feel up there, you can scream as loud as you want, as loud as you can, ain't nobody going to hear. Another example from the song is when Oh my god, I forgot about that song. It's to that one beat. Uh, you need a nigga that's gonna run and put it in your mouth. Um, so big it's like a foot in your mouth. A hey, um, um, some the J. Cole and um, Mount House Club. What's up? Let's take a trip. Uh, I can tell you the world is yours. Uh, what's the name of that song, bro? Y'all know the song. He went absolutely fair on that motherfucker. I mean, God damn. 
Go up, monk. When Pappy said, I know I'll remember. Even in the ad libs. Let me go round it back like 10 seconds. Remember that day in September. What's left and they're going to pay for what Lil Pooh Bear Mama go through. Yeah, that F dude gone too. Young Pappy really did not hold back. He was as disrespectful as he could be. On October 30th, 2014, young Pappy wrote on Facebook, F Munchie and his mom. An interesting detail a month before Munchie's murder, was that Munchie reached out to Puffy from PBG about squashing the beef between the two gangs. Another interesting detail is that a little less than a year before Munchie was killed, young Pappy gave a promise on his Facebook page. That in 2014, people would feel the same pain he went through after the murder of Pooh Bear, it seems like Pappy kept that promise. Screenshot this or whatever, my dude, but oh, none of you niggas fuck that shit straight like that. I don't give a fuck about none of this shit. None of this shit, say. This shit gonna be here, I man. I said that y'all can come at me anyway. I'm still a gun, but if I got to, but fuck this shit, period. I put my pride to the side. Two months after the murder of Munchie, young Pappy was actually jumped and beaten up by members from TBG and Lil4 Mob, the same gangs that were involved in his death six months later. TBG and Lil4 Mob celebrated this on Facebook and mocked young Pappy by writing, Young Pappy, how that ass whopping feel. Now we have come to the year 2015. It did not take long before Pappy got into trouble with the police in the new year. Young Pappy got into a fight in January 2015, at the same McDonald's where his friend Keo was killed in February 2014. Police said the fight moved outside and down a side street, Columbia Avenue. The man young Pappy was fighting, who was rumored to have been from Lock City, ended up with a bullet in his leg, Although no one was charged with the shooting, there is much to suggest that it was young Pappy who actually shot him, since he was the one fighting him. It would have been far too dangerous for any of young Pappy's friends to shoot him in a situation like that, because that person would have risked hitting Pappy. So in my opinion, it's pretty obvious that Pappy was the one that allegedly shot him. Just like I said, no one was charged with the shooting, however, Pappy was slapped with a reckless conduct charge. Pappy did plead guilty to the charge and was sentenced to 29 days in jail. Good luck to you, the judge said. According to Ingrid, Pappy's mother, police stormed into her apartment with guns drawn to arrest Pappy. They spent hours searching for a gun, but never found one.
Young Pappy was released from prison in early 2015. On May 8, 2015, Young Pappy released his most famous and iconic mixtape, Two Cups, Part 2 of Everything. Damn near every song on that mixtape is a classic. The mixtape included songs like Afterlife Part 3, Killa, Savages, Homicide and Night After Night, featuring his older brother B.U. Double. However, on the Friday Pappy released his album, he also organized a big release party for his mixtape at his house that also would be a birthday party since Pappy turned 22 days later. The evening had kicked off on social media when young Pappy announced on Facebook, party started. During the party, several neighbors heard gunshots, that according to rumors PBG Duddy let off into the air for unknown reasons. About an hour later, literally an army of police and even a SWAT team arrived and crashed Pappy's party. According to PBG Chemo, more than 50 police officers came to the scene and surrounded God the area. Damn. 150 people got arrested, both girls and boys. According to Chemo, the police thought they had kidnapped a person, something that Chemo just laughed away. The last to come out with handcuffs from the house was none other than Pappy, who mocked the police and said that they would stop harassing him and that he only wanted to have fun with his friends and have sexual intercourse with his girlfriend. Pappy, along with 30 other people, including Chemo, was charged with misdemeanor disorderly conduct. Pappy was bonded out the same day but about a week later, the rapper was back in jail for allegedly failing to appear at a hearing for an unrelated reckless conduct charge. He quickly posted bond and was back out on the street and wasted no time and released a new song called Shooters. At the end of May, what was not allowed to happen happened, young Pappy was shot and killed. A journalist called Ben Woodard who followed and covered Rogers Park for the news website DNA Info Chicago from 2012 to 2015, specifically young Pappy, woke up by a message from a guy familiar with young Pappy's gang. The message read, I think young Pappy got murdered in Uptown last night. An hour later he received another text message from the same person with the text, I'm almost certain young Pappy got assassinated. He was right. Around 1.35 a.m. Friday, on May 29, 2015, Pappy was walking with Duddy from PBGOTE in the 4800 block of North Kenmore Avenue when one or two gunmen walked up from behind and started shooting, striking Pappy twice in the back. He could not even see it coming. Pappy instantly dropped to the ground as the bullets paralyzed his body. Pappy was rushed to advocate Illinois Masonic Medical Center, where he sadly was pronounced dead at 3.01 a.m. Oh! It's TFG. Like 20 minutes ago, I thought P TBG was... My bad, bro. I know y'all in the comments killing me, too. Like many high-profile murders, there are different theories about which gang was actually behind the murder, and who was actually there. The theory that is most known, and which in my opinion makes the most sense, is the theory that it was DBG and Lil 4 Mob that was behind the murder. The specific people who have been rumored to have been involved in the murder are Mula, Sig and Big Zo from Lil 4 Mob, along with Gucci and Shada from TBG. However, it is still unclear until this day how they got the drop on him. Some have speculated that it was the Hoolies or Duddy who set him up, since Duddy was the cousin of Lil Duke from Day Day World. However, I do not believe that, it does not make sense. My personal opinion is that either the police gave away a young Pappy's location, 
either on purpose or by mistake or it was simply a coincidence that DBG and Lil 4 Mob spotted him. I know, the theory that the police have released young Pappy's location sounds bizarre. However, it is the only theory along with the coincidence theory that actually makes sense. Police were frustrated with Pappy. Pappy had been the victim of two assassination attempts that ended with two innocents being murdered. Pappy took over the music scene, and constantly mocked his rivals which led to shootings and violence in the north. Pappy was allegedly responsible for shootings and murders. The police really wanted him off the streets. Pappy to them was like a little snowball dropped from a hill that uncontrolled only got bigger and bigger. Pappy brought a lot of heat to the north side of the city. The police were simply not happy with that. According to Pappy himself, he was harassed by the police often. He was arrested several times in 2015 for minor charges, along with the 30-plus who were arrested at his release party. Like I said, this is just a theory, I wouldn't be surprised if it's true nor if it's false. If it's true, it could have been a mistake by the police, or they did it on purpose. Another thing that only adds fuel to the fire for this theory, is that young Pappy was on top of the Chicago Police Department's list for people they predict to shoot or kill someone as well as being shot or killed themselves. This list is based on an algorithm that assigns scores based on arrests, shootings, affiliations with gang members along with other variables. So them niggas look at us like numbers? That's all the algorithm is and numbers and numbers put it this and that, that fucking calculations and shit. That's all they look, it's numbers. It's numbers. The aftermath of the murder of young Pappy would be, as everyone predicted, brutal. Both mockery and love flowed on social media after the murder as expected. Rivals to young Pappy started mocking him in their songs, one of them Lil Duke who I mentioned earlier in the video. Ingrid, Pappy's mother, described her son as talented, smart and misunderstood. She said that the police cannot be trusted, and that they were painting her son as someone that he was not. Before his death, his mother said that she was scared for her son's life. The violence was close to home, she said. Her horrors and worst fears sadly became reality. I really suffer with the parents who had to bury their own children. No parent should have to do that. I send my condolences to all families who lost mothers, fathers, sons and daughters to gang violence. The aftermath in terms of violence was brutal. Just two days after the murder of young Pappy, PBG retaliated. AJ, whose real name was Clifton A. Fry, 22, was a member of Lock City who mocked young Pappy immediately after the murder by writing, smoking on Pappy right now on his Facebook page. 
Just hours, or a day, after the Facebook status was posted, he was shot. AJ was standing on a sidewalk in the 7600 block of North Ashland Avenue, near White Park and across the street from Gale Elementary School, when the shooter approached him and opened fire, striking him twice in the back. Police said a suspect drove off in a red vehicle. That suspect was Jermal Dossi, 17, more famous as PBG Spaz. Spaz was charged with attempted first-degree murder in the shooting since AJ did not die until two weeks after the shooting when doctors found that AJ had no cognitive function in his brain. He was sadly pronounced dead five days later. Lil Sean was also there and is now charged with the murder since the driver, Tyrone, used his own car for the hit, and when police found out that the car was his, they brought him in for questioning and he snitched on both Spaz and Lil Sean. Lil Sean is already serving 55 years in prison for the murder of Alan Francis that I mentioned earlier in the story. Spaz is waiting still on trial. PBG really did not give a damn after Pappy was killed. They were ready to put everything on the line and showed that here when a Lock City member mocked Pappy, and got smoked directly after. Damn. This nigga like an old nigga. RP to him though, but I'm just saying, this nigga like he about 35. These niggas was 17, 20. <laughs> I'm just trying to get to his lobby, you know what I'm saying? You bitches, that's why you bitches be getting overkill, headshots, and execution style. Yeah, on bro, and we be overkilling y'all, on bro, and. Oh, folks, all the niggas y'all lost, we over killed y'all. You go to heaven or hell, you gonna be fucked up when you get there. I guarantee you that. You gonna be in heaven or hell with a fucked up form. I guarantee you that. The hollows gonna fuck your body up. Who we, 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 Blake, hold on, Blake, Kino, Keon, Lucky, Valon, Vani, who, Munchie, that's seven. AJ, that's eight. Oh, I forgot about AJ. Dr. Jonathan, I could name a lot of you bitches. Let's keep it one hundred. I name every motherfucker. Fuck each other. Now, on folks, this is real shit. Who, 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 who did, who did y'all, who y'all took? Who free? JB. JB. Moosey. That's four. Kio. That's five. That's it. Five motherfuckers. Five motherfuckers, Z. On oh, folks, I just literally counted like eight motherfuckers. Y'all just seen me watch. Just count it. On oh, bro. Fuck. You niggas not on shit and motherfuckers merch. Fuck. We killed them motherfuckers. Fuck you talking about. Fuck. Shorty Doherty. Shorty Doherty. Just a month after the murder of AJ from Lock City, Lil Sean killed another member of Lock City, V12, whose real name was Valen Francis, whom I just mentioned in the last paragraph. 22-year-old Valen Francis and his fiance had been outside playing with their kids, ages 7, 4 and 3 when they noticed 19-year-old Sean Lil Sean Randall riding his bicycle down the street. Francis and his fiance thought Randall was dangerous and decided to bring their kids inside, as the couple gathered their kids' toys outside their home in the 2000 block of West Arthur Avenue. Randall walked back toward the house with a black hoodie pulled tightly around his face. As Francis reached for his daughter's bicycle, Randall opened fire, striking Francis four times. All three children and the fiancé were still outside when the shooting occurred. Witnesses recognized Randall, prosecutors said, because the top of his face was visible and some of his brown-tipped dreads popped out of the hood. Lil Sean was later charged and convicted of the murder. Like I said, PBG really didn't care and put everything on the line for Pappy. PBG had now dropped two bodies just within a month after Pappy was killed, and bodies would continue to drop. On November 14, 2015, it was TFG's turn to take revenge in Pappy's name. 
It is rumored that Savage Sheen, Don Don and King Shooter, all three from DFG, caught EJ from Lil 4 mob walking in the 1600 block of West Howard and shot him in his chest and back. A car was seen speeding away from the scene. EJ, whose real name was Eric Jordan, was pronounced dead at the hospital. However, just two weeks after EJ's assassination, PBG lost a member, Mosey. Mosey was outside on the 2200 block of West Tomey Avenue when someone exited a vehicle that was parked nearby and opened fire. Mosey was struck in the face and his body, sadly he was pronounced dead on the scene. The shooter, who is rumored to have been Voney from Lock City, took off in a green minivan. Next year, in May 2016, Kiki was killed from Lock City. Streets and Camo from PBG were the alleged shooters. In October 2016, DFG, and especially King Shuda and Savage Sheen, would strike again when they allegedly caught G-Tuck from Lil 4 Mob TBG and killed him. Five months after Kiki's murder, PBG took revenge after Mosey's murder. Kemo, D-Mac and Stucky from PBG, along with Lil Glow from Hula Gang, allegedly caught Voni from Lock City and started to let off shots. Boney was struck in the head and was later pronounced dead at the hospital. In November 2016, King Shooter himself was shot and killed outside a funeral, allegedly by Creep from Hula Gang. This was allegedly a retaliation for Shooter allegedly killing John John from Mag earlier in the same year at a party. The next year, in 2017, Lukey from PBG allegedly caught Ramo from Lock City and killed him. The next year, 2018, PBG shot King Ty on three different occasions. God Lil damn. DJ from PBG allegedly shot him in his stomach. Fresh from ABM and Duddy from PBG OTE later shot both King Ty and JJ. Both survived. There are a lot more killings and shootings that have occurred but that doesn't apply to this story. That is for another video. o'clock in the morning. I swear to God, I didn't know. I've been here working all night, bro. Now we have come to the end of this story, and as usual I will write a small descriptive text of the person in question, Young Pappy. Young Pappy was one of my absolute favorite rappers from Chicago. His flow, his lyrics and energy really got you hyped up, he could get you on- That shit's no cap. I could listen to Killer right now, I could listen to, uh, Finito right now. Uh, damn, they're my two favorites, I'm gonna hang on sitting here and bullshit with y'all. 
But uh, for the most part, I can listen to a couple others. I get geeked. For real. And what he was on. Unfortunately, as with many other. Even at 5 a.m., I get geeked. Rappers from Chicago. Pap, he actually lived the life he rapped about, which would eventually lead to his death. And again, Chicago would lose an incredible talent that would have been at the top of the music industry today if he were alive. It's just sad to see so much talent go to waste in Chicago. I just hope now that Pappy's brothers, B.U. Double and Tasaf stay alive and focus on the music. The same year that Pappy was murdered, in 2015, B.U. Double was shot nine times, happily he survived. He has also been in and out of prison just like his little brother Tasaf. I just hope that they stay alive and focus on their music. I hope Pappy rests in peace and that his legacy will last forever. Thank you for watching the video. Comment on what you thought of it. Rest in peace to the people whose lives were taken in the gang wars. Go watch that video if you haven't done so. But, um... What I can say is, man... Ooh. Oh, yeah, they want to get into this one. Yeah. But anyway, uh... What I like to say is, um... You know, that a lot of this shit in the, in the, in these, in these, in these, in these, like, story of such and such, story of this, stuff, <clears throat> story of this person, story of that person, a lot of this shit, I ain't gonna say it surpri don't surprise me, but, like, when I hear it, it's like, damn, but it's like, mm, kind of should have guessed that shit, but I ain't the type of motherfucker to kind of put that assumption on the motherfucker off of a lyric just like me you both know them niggas can say anything in the word word and anything in the world in lyrics i can literally say bitch i'm rich like bill gates uh lyric that's a lyric right there that's a bar you know what i'm saying that's the opening bar of my mixtape you know what i'm saying that shit's cap not saying that these niggas be cappers, but almost like how do you take these videos with a grain of salt? I take niggas' lyrics. Young Thug literally said he had a prostitute granny. It's the up song with him and Lil Uzi. Go listen to it. Point being, is that shit real? We don't fucking know. Could it be cap? Could it be facts? We don't fucking know. We had to take that shit with a grain of salt. Other than that, though, man, it's your boy Snorman. I'm going to get the hell up out of here. I'm gone, man.